Good evening. <laughs> this is Jeep's father, Dr. Allison. If I may take a moment of your time before our show tonight, I want to express my very sincere appreciation for all the wonderful letters and cards so many of you have written to us uh, telling us how much you like the show. Even though we can't answer each one of you separately, we enjoy hearing from you, and we hope you will continue to let us know if you like... Hey, Pop, don't forget to thank him for us, too. <laughs> okay, son, I won't. On behalf of Mrs. Bixby and Peggy and the young man you've just heard, thanks from all us Allisons to all of you. We hope you'll be listening for a long time to come. And now for tonight's show. Do you know the best way to turn a, a bobcat into a wolf? Well, I'll be back in just a minute to tell you how one person accomplished that. That's right, I mean my young offspring, my son, Jeep. Yes, it's my son, Jeep, the warm-hearted adventures of the Allison family of Grove Falls, and starring Donald Cook as Doc with young Martin Houston as wonderful, unpredictable, 10-year-old Jeep Allison. I remember reading somewhere something about the best laid plans of mice and men going astray or something. Anyway, whoever wrote it, I know what he means. Jeep had some plans not long ago. They were good plans, and he meant well, but as usual, something went astray. It started one Friday afternoon with Jeep's arrival home from school. Hey, everybody, I'm home. Oh, hi, Mrs. Bixby. You're just the one I wanted to see. I know, you're hungry. Well, if the kitchen's still standing up the way you slammed that door, you'll find some apple pie in the icebox. Oh, I don't want anything to eat. Well, if you haven't got food on your mind, what do you want with me? Oh, gee, that's no way to talk. Came all the way home from school just to do you a favor. Do me a what? A favor, you know. Oh, listen, I'm busy. The biggest favor you can do for me is to keep out of my way. Oh, gosh, that's not much of a good deed. I couldn't count that. Gee, what on earth are you talking about? Well, tomorrow's Saturday, isn't it? There's a scout meeting. Oh, now I get it. You mean your good deeds for the Cub Scouts. Sure, and I'm four behind. And I'll make them up before the meeting tomorrow. Something awful might happen. Oh, such as what? Mm. Well, I might stay a bobcat the rest of my life. That would be dreadful. Yeah. Never get to be a wolf or a bear or a lion. Oh, my goodness. Or a wibbelos. A wadalos? <laughs> a wibbelos. That's the highest rank you can be in the Cub Scouts. So please, Mrs. Bixby, can't I do a good deed for you? Well, I sure wouldn't want to keep you from being all them animals, so... So I guess there is something you can do for me. What? Well, you can take the big basket from the back porch and get the wash down off the line. You mean all of it? Well, now, what would be the point of taking down part of it? Yeah, I suppose you're right. Anyway, it'll give you an appetite. Well, I have to do it now. <laughs> Don't sound so enthusiastic. Yes, do it now if you're going to do it at all. Well, is there an awful lot of washing out there? Yeah, there's quite a bit. Why? I was just thinking. If there's that much wash, couldn't we count that as two good deeds? Well, you, you might, but I wouldn't. Well, it's just an idea. And not a very good one. Oh, hi, Pop. Oh, hello, son. Uh, what are you doing home so early? I have some very important things to take care of. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Bixby, uh, Miss Miller won't be having supper with us tonight. She won't? Well, how come? Well, she's going to a, a church supper or something. <laughs> I know them suppers. Chicken croquettes and canned peas. Oh, gee, Pop, don't let her go. Oh, listen, you two. We don't own Miss Miller, you know. Just because she works for me and eats with us doesn't mean she can't have a life outside. And speaking of outside, Jeep, when you bring in the wash, don't forget to pick up all the clothespins. I won't. Uh, there must be something wrong with my hearing. Huh? I could have sworn I heard her say that you were going to bring in the wash. Oh, Pop, is there any favor I can do for you? Well, now I know I have to have my ears examined. Uh, have you been up to something? Of course not. Then how come this sudden flurry of goodwill? Girly, Pop, you act like I never did anything for you. Oh, I do. Well, I'm sorry, Jeep, I, I didn't mean to. I suppose I shouldn't look a gift horse in the mouth. Huh? No, that's just an expression, son. Oh, well, what does it mean? 
Well, uh, you, uh, you know the first thing a man does when he's buying a horse. No, I never bought one. Uh, <laughs> that's not the point. Uh, before you buy a horse, you always open his mouth to look at his teeth. That's so you can tell how old he is. Well, how do you know? Well, I saw it in a movie once. Now, just take it from me. It's true. <laughs> anyway, it, uh, where was I? Looking in the horse's mouth. <laughs> Well, the, the expression means that when you're offered something for nothing, uh, don't examine it too closely. But if, I, well, but if somebody gave me a horse, I'd want to know how old it was. Now, that's got nothing to do with it. It's just a saying. I dropped the whole thing. Okay. Now, can I do you a favor? Why? Well, my scout meeting's tomorrow afternoon. And I'm four good deeds behind. Oh, uh -huh, so that's what all this is about. Now, why did you let yourself get so far behind? Oh, you know how it is, Pop. The week sort of slips by before you know it. So please, haven't you got a good deed I can do for you? Well, right now, old boy, I can't think of any. Gee, not even one. Well, don't get downhearted. You've got until tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, but you don't know how hard it is to find good deeds to do for people. Well, it's funny, but I can remember times when there were jobs to do around the house and you never volunteered. Well, that was different. I wasn't behind in my good deeds then. <clears throat> Bonjour, mon père. Huh? Et vous aussi, mon petit frère. What's the matter with her? Your, uh, your sister is speaking French, or a reasonable facsimile. She is? Eh bien, mon fille, comment ça va? She, you too, Pop? <laughs> Je suis heureuse de vous voyer cet après-midi. No, I'm sorry, honey. I lost you on that one. <laughs> Honestly, father. I said I was glad to see you this afternoon. Oh. Well, I'm glad to see you, too, Peggy. All that, just to say hello. <laughs> You're just jealous because you don't speak French. I speak pig Latin, and that's a lot harder. <laughs> now, now, Jeep, don't, don't make fun of Peggy. She's doing very well with her French. Thank you, Father. It's a relief that somebody in this family appreciates the finer things in life. Ha, ha, ha. Only 13, and she talks like she was in college. Father, I have something I wish to say to you. Well, go ahead, dear. Mon cher papa, le demain après midi, le cercle français projet en session de notre maison. Uh, honey, I, I think you better take that in English. Uh, you see, my French is pretty rusty. Yeah, I'd like to know what's going on, too. My French club is having a meeting here tomorrow afternoon. It's a very special occasion. What's so special about a lot of girls jabbering in French? Father, are you going to stand there and let him insult me? Now, both of you, stop it. I'm going up to my room and practice my French. Ah, bonjour, mes amis. Je suis heureuse de vous voyeur. Women. <laughs> Do you understand them, Pop? Me? I don't even understand ten-year-old boys. Where are you going? Speaking of women reminded me. i got to take in the wash. You got a train to catch, Jeep? Huh? Well, don't gulp your milk that way. What's the rush? You've got all evening. I've got a lot on my mind, Pop. Well, I don't see the connection. Take it a little easy. May I be excused, Father? Well, sure, but can't you keep me company until I finish my coffee? Father, I am the hostess tomorrow. I have to make a speech of welcome to the girls in French. What's the matter with them? Don't they understand just plain English? <laughs> hey. Okay, I apologize. Well, you're excused, Peggy. Never let it be said I stood in the way of culture. Go on upstairs and practice. Ah, bonjour, mes amis. Je suis très heureuse de vous voyeur. You're excused too, Jeep, if you want to be. Yeah, guess I might as well start in clearing off the table. You are going to clear the table? Sure. Oh, oh, of course, your good deeds. How many more do you have to go? Well, this is the last one. Well, you see, I told you you'd get them all in. Well, it wasn't easy, Pop. Do you realize this will be my fourth good deed since I got home from school this afternoon? Uh, turn around a minute, son. Why? Just wanted to see if you were beginning to sprout wings. <laughs> That's kind of funny, Pop. Well, every now and then I get off a good one. <laughs> You know, Doctor, I can't get over this boy. He's been a real help to me tonight with his good deeds. Well, that's the way to get to be a Webelos. Come again? 
A weather lover. That's the highest rank you can be in the Cub Scouts. You know, if we grown-ups had any sense, we'd take a tip from the Cub Scouts. If all of us went around doing a good deed every day, this might be a better world. Oh, isn't that the truth? Oh, uh, by the way, Mrs. Bixby, I meant to ask you, uh, what was that new casserole we had tonight? You noticed it, huh? Well, it, it tasted a little different. Yeah. Uh, how about the cake? Well, come to think of it, that was a little different, too. Uh-huh. Mm. That was one of uh, Jeep's good deeds. He wanted to help with supper, so I asked him to sprinkle grated cheese over the macaroni casserole and shredded coconut over the icing on the cake. <laughs> Oh, so he put the coconut in the macaroni. I did. You did. Grated cheese on marshmallow icing. Oh. But, Pop, you had two whole helpings. Oh, please, don't remind me. Oh, I better get the table cleared off. Jeep, don't you dare carry that many dishes all at once. Oh, don't get scared. I can handle them all right. Uh, doctor, how many more good deeds does he have to do? Uh, this makes the last one, thank goodness. <laughs> oh, no. Well, that good deed just set you back $3. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, Mr. Bixby. I'll pick up all the pieces. Oh, excuse me, doctor. I better go supervise. Father, look at what that child has done now. What? This is the end, the absolute end. Now, now, calm down, honey. What's the matter? Look at this. What is it? That was my diary. Wet, isn't it? <laughs> it is positively soaked. Look how the ink is run. Page after page ruined. Well, all right, dear. We'll get to the bottom of this. Uh, Jeep, come here a minute. Oh, my most secret thoughts just... just washed away. <laughs> I know, Peg, but I, I'm sure your brother didn't do it intentionally. You want me, Pop? Yeah. Uh, how did Peggy's diary happen to get wet? Gosh, I don't know. You do so, Jeffrey Allen. Were you in your sister's room this evening, son? Well, yes. I went in to do her a good deed. See, that big plant on her desk looked awful dry. So I got a pitcher of water and I... Oh, oh, I must have poured too much. <laughs> you certainly did. But I didn't know your diary was there, Peggy. Well, why didn't you look? I always keep it on the desk. I'm sorry, I'll buy you a new one out of my allowance. There, you see, dear. Oh, that's all very well. But what'll I do about January? What do you mean? Father, you know perfectly well that every night I write in my diary what I did during the day. And now January is simply washed away. <laughs> <laughs> How can I possibly remember what I did last month? Why do you want to? Oh, don't be infantile. What else is a diary for? But Jeep's apologized, dear, and he's going to buy you a new diary. Don't you think you should forgive him? I suppose so. Suddenly, Father, I feel so, so old. You do? <laughs> How time flies. Another whole month gone out of my life forever. Pop. Hmm? You know, I was wondering, you think I ought to count clearing the table as a good deed? Well, I don't know, son. You did break all those dishes. All but one. Oh, really? Well, every cloud has a silver lining. But should I count it? You didn't accomplish what you set out to, did you? No, I guess not. Well, in that case, we don't count it. Then I've got to find another good deed to do. Oh, in that case, we do count it. <laughs> okay, if you say so. Uh, now that you're all caught up on your good deeds, try to stay that way, won't you? Don't worry, Pop, I will. Which reminds me, are you caught up on your homework? Gee, how could I be with everything else I've been doing? Well, then how about getting to it now? Oh, I only got my history lesson to read. Well, tell you what. You read your history book. Uh, I'll read my medical journal. And here comes Miss Bixby with her knitting. And we'll have a nice, quiet evening. Okay. Oh, I always say there's nothing better than getting your day's work done and sitting down and relaxing. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Pop. Hmm? You know history? Oh, I used to, but we sort of lost track of each other. Why? <laughs> Boy, this Charlie Magny must have been quite a guy. Who? Charlie Magny. He was a French king. Oh, you mean Charlemagne. <laughs> uh, I like the way Jeep says it better. Father, I have a very important question to ask you. Oh, fire away, honey. Would you consider a de rigueur to serve cocoa and sandwiches in the middle of my club meeting tomorrow? No, I think it would be fine, but don't forget, I'm no authority. Oh, uh, no, you sit still, Doctor. I'll get it. <clears throat> Uh, Dr. Allison's residence. 
Oh, hello there, Miss Roberts. <laughs> well, what was that? Pajamas. Well, no, of course we aren't missing any. Who? Oh, uh, oh, uh-huh. They did. Oh, my land. Oh, that's a shame, Miss Roberts. Oh, I hope you find out who it all belongs to. Yes, and uh, goodbye. Oh. What was all that about? Oh, some poor family around here had all their wash blown all over the neighborhood. Oh, I sure pity whoever has to do it over. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Ms. Roberts found some. Miss Cress across the street in the harbors in back of us. All the neighbors are trying to find out who it belongs to. But how could a thing like that happen? Well, maybe somebody took down their wash and forgot to bring it in. Hey, uh, wait a minute. Jeep, Alice. Yes, ma'am? Did you bring our wash in? Why, sure, don't you remember? I went out and took it off the line. And then I... Ay, ay, ay. Oh. <laughs> Just what I thought. You left the wash outside. Gee, if any of my clothes are lost. What? You, you mean that's our stuff all oh. over the neighborhood? <laughs> but golly, I didn't mean to. Oh, well, come on now, everybody. We got work to do. Now, Peggy, you run over to the Harpers and see how much they picked up. And, and Doctor, you go across the street to Miss Cress, and I'll go to Mrs. Roberts and. <sighs> Jeep. Yes, Mrs. Bixby. <clears throat> you go up and down the block, child, and ask at all the other houses. Now, everybody, get your coats and hats. I'm going to feel absolutely ridiculous going up to Mrs. Cress and saying, Excuse me, madam, I just dropped by to pick up some of my laundry. <laughs> Oh, now, just dump the clothes down here by the stairs, Doctor. I'll throw them in the machine in a minute. Okay. Well, when the children get back, I'll check everything to be sure nothing's missing. This has been one of the weirdest days we've spent in a long time, Mrs. Yeah. Bixby. Well, here's Peggy. All I can say is it's a good thing it's dark outside. Here's what I collected. Can you imagine what would happen if any of my friends had seen me with all that wash? I'd be absolutely finished socially. Listen, if we didn't get that wash back, I'd be finished financially. I wonder what's taken Jeep so long. Well, maybe he stopped along the way to do a few more good deeds. Oh, my lands, I better warn the neighbors. No, 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 I was just kidding. <laughs> no, he, he's all finished. Are you sure, Father? Well, pretty sure. Let's see, he spread the wash all over town. He, he put the cheese on the marshmallow icing. And then he broke the dishes and uh, ruined Peggy's diary. Yeah, that's four good deeds. He's all caught up. <laughs> Hi. Where do you want this, Mrs. Bixby? Uh, over here with all the rest of it. Did you look everywhere? Don't worry, I picked up everything. Oh, there's my very best school dress. Thank goodness you didn't lose that. I'll get it. Well, I'm not in, uh, unless it's a patient. Hi, Boots, come on in. I can only stay a minute. I just dropped by to find out how you were coming along with your good deeds. I got them all done. You did? I didn't think you'd ever catch up. Sure. What's all that laundry doing in the hall? That's one of my good deeds. You mean getting it dirty? <laughs> well, I'll tell you about it later. Did you good, did get your good deed in today? Yeah. What'd you do? Helped an old lady across the street. Gosh, you're all the way home from school? I look for an old lady, too. I couldn't find even one. Well, it took a lot of time. I had to stand on the corner a half an hour before one came along. Even then I had trouble. How come? She didn't want to cross the street. <laughs> you can't count that, Boots. Sure I can. I took her across the street and then I brought her back again. <laughs> oh. But I can't figure out how you could do five good deeds all in one afternoon. What do you mean, five? You mean four. I mean five. Look, Monday I took out the ashes. That left Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Four days. Well, I did four good deeds today. You took out the ashes Sunday. I did not. You did so, Jeep Allison. I helped you, didn't I? Yeah. It was Sunday. Golly. So you still got money's good deed to do. Well, I got to get on home. See you tomorrow morning. Gee, just when I thought it was all finished. Pop. Hey, what do you want, son? Can I tell you something? Certainly. Well, I made a mistake. I still have one more good deed to do. Jeep, I had a long day, and I'm tired. Uh, for once, I'm going to put my foot down. I don't care if you have 50 good deeds left. Do them tomorrow. <laughs> Well, 
Well, uh, Jeep went to bed about nine that night, and probably to dream about becoming a Webelos or whatever it is, and the rest of the evening passed very quietly. The next day was Saturday, and right after lunch, Mrs. Bixby and Peggy went out shopping for her party, and I had to run over to the hospital to visit a patient. Uh, Jeep and his friend Boots were left alone in the house. Look, we've only got half an hour before the scout meeting. Come on, Boots, think of something. I'm trying, ain't I? Only one good deed. Do you think that'd be easy enough to find? I keep telling you, we're not going to find it here. We've been over the house from top to bottom. Yeah, I got an idea. Let's go over to your house. Oh, no. My mother's got a rule. No good deeds inside the house. <coughs> hey, I know. What? I'll get out the vacuum cleaner and clean the rug here in the living room. It's clean already. Oh, Boots, it might be clean enough for you and me. But it's not clean enough for Peggy. What's she got to do with it? She's got a big party coming over here this afternoon. The whole French club's coming over. What for? To talk French, what else? What do they want to do that for? Oh, who knows? Come on, help me get the vacuum cleaner out. You think it's fair to count this for your good deed? Well, sure, it's for Peggy, isn't it? Yeah. I guess it's all right. Give me a hand with this, and watch out for the cord. This will be easy. A couple of times over the rug and we'll be all through. Who's we? This is your good deed. Well, you can plug in the plug at least. Okay, it's plugged in. Turn the switch on. What are you waiting for? I turned it on. It's not working. Then put the vacuum cleaner away and find something else. Oh, what are you talking about? I'll fix it. How? Well... There's electricity in the socket, isn't there? I don't know. Well, there is, and it comes through the cord, and the cord's all right. So the trouble must be in the switch. You give me your scout knife. What are you going to do? It's the switch, of course. What's at this end, Jeep? Well, that's where the dirt bag is. Maybe the trouble's in there. Hey, don't touch that, or the dirt might fall out. It slipped. <laughs> now look what you did, Boots. Gee, never would have thought such a little machine could hold such a lot of dirt. Don't track it all over the place. I'm sorry, Jeep. Oh, that's okay. Let's put the bag back in. As soon as I get this working, I can get that pile of dirt up in no time. Let's see, what is it? Oh, this little screw here is loose. I'll just tighten it. Yeah, now it ought to work. Nothing. That's funny. Mrs. Bixby was using it yesterday. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe a fuse is blown. Well, tough luck. We better get started for the meeting. Oh, no. I'm not giving up now. Where are you going? Down cellar to check the fuses. When I yell, you turn the switch on. Okay, but make it snappy. We'll be late. Oh, hello, Boots. Well, are you here alone? Oh, hi, Dr. Allison. Well, where's G... Yeah, what's that dirt doing on the floor? Jeep's <laughs> down the cellar. What? Well, what for? What are you kids up to? Okay, Boots. Hey, what's going on here? Jeep's doing Peggy a favor. What? All right, try it again. Still ain't working. Uh, will you please stop all this yelling back and forth and get this dirt cleaned up before Peggy and Mrs. Bixby see it? We're trying to. The vacuum cleaner isn't working. Will you please tell me why you took it out in the first place? Okay, try it again. Try hey, what? Hey, Jeep, your father's here. What? I said your father's here. Oh, uh, tell him my father's not home. Jeep, come up here this minute. Is that you, Pop? Well, I think so. Come up here. <laughs> now, Boots, let's hear your version of all this. Well, you see, Jeep still had one good deed to do. Well, why didn't he just set fire to the house? Huh? <laughs> well, never mind. Go, go on. So, he decided that... You really want to hear this? No, but go on. <laughs> Well, that's pretty obvious. How did all this dirt get on the rug? That was my fault, Doctor. No, it was mine, Pop. But I spilled the dirt, Chief. You wouldn't have if I hadn't gotten the vacuum cleaner out. I'm the one to blame. Well, I'm not blaming anyone, but... But who, why get the vacuum cleaner out in the first place? The living room's perfectly clean. Or, I mean, it was. Well, to tell the truth, I was getting a little desperate. Here's time to go to the scout meeting. And gosh, Pop, unless I live up to all the rules... I'll be a bobcat until I'm an old man. Unless that mess is cleaned up before Peggy gets home, you may not live to be an old man. <laughs> yeah. Well, she'd be mad, wouldn't she? That's a mild way of describing it. 
The house wouldn't be a fit place for either of us. This is a big party, G. I know. Come on, Chief. Fix the vacuum cleaner if you're gonna, and let's get to the meeting. Yeah, okay, Boots. You take now, the vacuum... Ho, 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 hold it, both of you. Boots. Yes, sir? Sit down. Over there. Yes, sir. And, Jeep, you sit over here. I'll fix the vacuum cleaner. You sure you know how, Pop? Oh, what kind of a question is that? Of course I know how. <laughs> now, <clears throat> what's wrong with it? It doesn't work. Thanks for the tip. <laughs> Switch is all right. Well, let's check the cord. Oh, well, no wonder it won't work. What's the matter? Well, nothing much. The plug's just not in all the way. I thought I plugged it all the way in. Uh, there, now, I'll turn the switch on. Gee, something's wrong! Hey, Pop, it's going to turn all over the place! Oh, quick, somebody turn off the switch and yank out the cord. Hurry it up! Gee, what a mess. Well, how, how did it happen? You must have had the holes on the wrong end. I? I didn't touch it. Uh-oh, somebody think of something fast. Here they come. So if you get the cocoa ready, Mrs. Bixby, I'll... Oh, Mrs. Bixby! Look! Mercy alive, what happened? The hose was on the wrong end. <laughs> what? Oh, Doctor, you've got to watch out for those things. I was spraying with it yesterday. Oh, what am I going to do? My wonderful party absolutely ruined. Uh, now, darling, it's no such thing. We'll get the room cleaned up. But, but the girls will be here in a few minutes. Well, we'll just have to work as fast as we can. Well, now, I'll handle this, Peggy. You go on in and start making the cocoa. And Boots, take that, ho that hose off that end and put it on the other. And, and Jeep, go get a dust cloth out of the kitchen. And Doctor, uh, you stay out of my way. Uh, no, I, I feel I ought to help. Well, then get the attachments out of the hall closet. Oh, there are some of my guests now. Well, just keep them out in the hall, but honey. what do I do? Talk French to them till we get the room cleaned up. And you know what, Pop? After all the trouble we went to to clean up the living room for Peggy's party, Boots didn't think I ought to count it as a good deed. Well, did you count it, Jeep? I'll clean it up, didn't I? Anyway, Pop, it wasn't me who made the mess. Uh, are you insinuating it was me? Am I what? Uh, are you saying it was my fault? Well, you turn on the vacuum cleaner. Well, isn't that exactly what you were trying to do? But I didn't. Yeah, okay, you win. You can count it. I already have. <coughs> Pop. What is it now? Want to hear something? Only if it's good news. What's well, real good news? Well, don't keep me in suspense. I am now a wolf. Uh, oh, 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 I remember. That's one step higher than a bobcat. Yep. And just think, Pop, pretty soon you'll be able to tell all your friends that your son is a Wettelos. That Jeep will be the proudest moment of my life. <laughs> My Son Jeep was created and written by Walter Black and William Mendrick and directed by Dan Sutter. Music selection by John Geller. Tonight's cast included Leona Powers as Mrs. Bixby, Joan Laser as Peggy, Dick Wigginton as Boots, and featured young Martin Houston as 10-year-old Jeep. Starring in the role of Doc is one of America's finest actors and most versatile comedians, Donald Cook. And now, this is Fred Collins inviting you to be with us again next week, same time, same station, for the next delightful visit with Dr. Allison and my son, Jeep. My Son, Jeep has been a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.